Joe Biden is warning the U.S. economy stands at an inflection point. In a speech last hour at the White House, the U.S. president pitched his stalled infrastructure plans in stark terms. Mr. Biden told lawmakers they have a choice, either return to the pre-pandemic economy where the rich are enabled to dodge taxes or chart a new course where the working class has what he calls a fair shot. This is an opportunity to be the nation we know we can be. A nation where all of us, all of us, not just those at the top, are getting to share the benefits of a growing economy in the years ahead. Let's not squander this moment trying to preserve an economy that hasn't worked too well for Americans for a long time. Let's not look backward just trying to rebuild what we had. Let's look forward together as one American. Stephen Collinson is in Washington for us. Great to see, great to see you. So, uh, you know, listening to the president in this speech, uh, and then you think about actually putting this into action, and if you put Republicans aside, the president is facing major headwinds from those even in his own party. There are, there are deep divisions in the Democratic Party on how to pay for this. That's right, Alison. The U.S. economy is not the only thing that's an inflection point. The entire Biden presidency uh, is on the line, really, in the next few weeks. The, the, the economic and infrastructure plans, trillions of dollars worth that the Congress is currently considering, would make uh, Joe Biden one of the most historically significant presidents of modern times. He's trying to really reshape the economy uh, in favor of working class Americans on health care, education, uh, home care for elderly people, uh, climate change uh, uh, spending. So, you know, he really does have to try and overcome these divisions between moderate Democrats like uh, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin, who doesn't want to spend $3.5 trillion, that's the price of the president's biggest spending pan, and progressives who see that $3.5 trillion as already uh, a lowball figure and their compromise offer. Uh, the fact is that the, the Senate is 50-50. The Democrats only have a three-vote uh, uh, majority in the House. So you can see how difficult this is going to be to squeeze all this through. All the while, the Republicans are off stage trying to create as much disruption as they can uh, to try and thwart Biden and what is really his uh, central project of his entire presidency. Yeah, we shall see how this goes. And then you're hearing about the debt ceiling negotiations kind of being thrown into this as well, just to add more, you know, more controversy into those negotiations. Stephen Collinson, thanks so much. Thanks. The U.S. economy does appear to be at an inflection point when it comes to the pandemic recovery. The summer began with high hopes for a return to normal as more people got vaccinated. In July and August, economists warned the Delta variant could quash many of those gains. New, reta new retail numbers show Americans actually did more shopping than expected last month. Retail sales grew 0.7 percent from July. They were almost 2 percent higher if you leave out car sales. After roaring back from pandemic lows, sales have leveled out in recent months. The U.S. Commerce Secretary tells CNN business could help the economy by making COVID vaccinations a work requirement. We were moving in a, in a much better direction for restaurants, hotels, and then the Delta variant started to spike. And so the single best thing that we can do quickly, immediately, to help restaurants, help hotels, help hospitality is for everybody to get vaccinated so that waiters and waitresses feel comfortable going back to work, people feel comfortable going out for dinner, business travel can pick up again and business travelers can you know, spend money in restaurants. That I cannot emphasize enough. Everybody needs to get vaccinated and businesses should really consider uh, requiring their employees to get vaccinated. Matt Egan is live for us in New York. Matt, great to see you. You know, after getting those retail sales numbers, it, it seems like we've got an economic picture that's mixed. You know, retail sales numbers posting a surprise gain, jobless benefits increasing a little more than expected. How do you see the economy shaping up at this point? Well, Allison, clearly the pandemic uh, continues to weigh on the recovery. Uh, we've seen the impact from the Delta variant slowing air travel and restaurant reservations, uh, briefly slowing hotel reservations as well. Um, but there's hope that uh, maybe if the cases have peaked, that perhaps the economy can kind of get back uh, on track. And what's interesting is that you heard from the Commerce Secretary there, there's this emphasis on vaccines and, and how important it is 
uh, for people to get vaccinated and for businesses to encourage their employees and in some cases their customers to get um, vaccinated. And, and we heard that message um, yesterday from the White House Chief of Staff, uh, Ron Klain, as well. He was speaking at the SALT conference and he said that essentially vaccines are a way to stimulate the economy. And it makes a lot of sense when you think about the fact that COVID has been just such an overhang here for 18 months. Uh, and we do have vaccines that are available that are safe and effective. And if more people do get vaccinated, then it should be able to remove some of that overhang on the economy and perhaps allow the job market to finally you know, fully recover here, Allison.